Virtual learning is hard. While I don't have a magic wand to make teaching through Google Meet or Zoom easy, I do have five ideas I'd like to share with you that can make your Google Meet sessions a little bit more enjoyable for you and your students. These ideas are easy to implement and three of the five ideas can be done without the premium version of Google Meet. I hope these ideas will give you a new spark to make your virtual lessons a little more interesting. All right, let's get into it. Idea number one. Kick off your next virtual session by challenging your students to a classic board game. This is a fun way to warm up your students and welcome in students who arrive early and wait for students who arrive a few minutes late. Now my personal favorite is the simple Connect 4 game that is available inside of Google Slides. Simply assign this um, slide deck to your students and have them pick a partner, pick a slide, and play a game together for the first two or three minutes of class. If you want to th make things a little more challenging, you can play a game of Battle Sheets. This was developed by my friend Eric Kurtz. This one is inside of Google Sheets, and this one you probably would have to play over the course of several class sessions, but it actually has some good math components to it as well. Now, you can keep things fun. My friend Jen Giffen uh, has put together a cool collection of virtual games inside of Google Slides. We've got Snakes and Ladders, Trouble, Chess, Lots of cool things that you can check out. I'll link to her uh, games in the description for this video. If you want to keep things more academic, I would highly recommend that you check out these math games by Dwayne Habecker. These things are awesome. I was playing with my own two kids, and it's really a fun way to engage your students. Uh, this game here, called Four in a Row, teaches students multiplication. It's kind of a, a tic-tac-toe math version. Um, so these are some fun academic games. Now, in addition to these Google Slides and Google-themed games, you can also do things like uh, practice typing. So nitro type is a thing that you could do to challenge your students to get the you know most accurate score or the highest words per minute. Depending on how into this you want to get, you can keep a class leaderboard to see who's leading the typing challenge. Or you could even play Quizlet and practice uh, flashcards, multiplication tables, spelling words, geography, whatever you're learning. Put together a Quizlet set and challenge your students. If you have the premium version of Quizlet, uh, you can even keep track of the class leaderboard. Now, these games serve multiple purposes. First, they do engage your students for the first few minutes of class, but they also serve as a sponge activity for you. Uh, if you have the premium version of Google Meet, you may want to set up poll questions, exit ticket through Q&A, breakout rooms, and you need some time to set those things up. So while your students are playing Connect Four, you can be setting up those breakout rooms, preparing your lesson for the class period. One thing I've learned about virtual lessons is that you should never start on time because you always have two, three, five kids who show up five minutes late and they're joining the session late can interrupt the flow of your class. So plan a sponge activity using one of these games. It engages your students and helps your lesson go more smoothly. Idea number two is called put a hand up. Now this one might be my favorite out of all the ideas I'm going to share with you in this video. This idea works very well with all grade levels, subject areas, and it works very, very well with mobile devices. So if you teach in an iPad school or if many of your students are joining on their mobile phones, this is the idea for you. All you need to do is ask your students a yes, no question. Put a hand up if you think that peanut M&Ms are better than plain M&Ms. Something like that. Students are going to use the hand raise feature of Google Meet to indicate if they agree with that statement. Now the hand raise feature is always available in the bottom toolbar of Google Meet. It's gonna be right down there. And again, it works very, very well on mobile phones also. So I'm gonna click the raise hand icon. Now as the meeting host, you can click on the attendance list and you can see a list of all the students who have raised their hand. Little side note, 
the student whose name is at the top of that list was the first student to raise their hand and then it goes down in sequential order uh, below that person. So you could even you know, call on the first student and have them elaborate or explain or justify their answer. Now put a hand up is a great activity because it allows you to kind of transition from the beginning of your class. Maybe you're playing one of those board games, you're welcoming students in, you start with some non-academic questions, just kind of some fun things, but then you begin transitioning into your lesson for the day. And your put a hand up questions can transition as well. So you might ask a question like, Put a hand up if you have ever seen a cell under a microscope. Put a hand up if you have ever watched a movie based off of a Shakespearean play or something along that line. So this begins the transition from kind of the welcoming opening activity into your lesson for the day. Try this out in your next virtual meeting. Ask your students to put a hand up. Idea number three is learning Pictionary. Now Jamboard is cool, but if you want every student to have their own individual spot to write, draw, and sketch, I would recommend a tool called whiteboard.fi. This free web-based tool allows every student to have their own virtual whiteboard they can draw something on it, push that to you, you get to see everyone's, but you won't run into the issues with Jamboard that you know students are overwriting or editing or messing around with one another's um, drawing spaces. So let me do a quick demo of whiteboard.fi. Uh, it's very easy to set up. You go to whiteboard.fi, you create a, um, a link to your whiteboard class. I then shared that link inside of um, Google Meet, students will receive that, they'll click on it, and that will take them to whiteboard.fi. So uh, I have a teacher whiteboard uh, that I can draw on if I want. Now one way that you could potentially use this is for spelling. So your students will be in a Google Meet session with you. You can verbally uh, give them a word, say, all right, students, I want you to spell the word table. Your students will verbally hear that and then they will go to their whiteboard. I've got another device set up over here and um, I have a pen, so we'll, we'll use the pen this time. T-A-B-L-E, okay? So that might be one student and then we're gonna go over here to another student. Now maybe this student uh, struggles, T-A-B-E-L, okay? Now this is the teacher view. So I can see Peter, and Susan exactly what they have drawn. And imagine you had 30 different tiles, you would see all of your students. Now I can push that tile to the group, I can preview the tile, um, or I can push something to the student. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my whiteboard. Um, we'll clear, and I'm going to give them the solution. So the correct answer is T, A, B, L, E, table. And then I'm going to push that to my students. <clears throat> that will appear on their screen and that is the correct answer. Now that's just how you would use it for a spelling test. There's many great ways you can use this. Um, world language teachers um, have found a lot of success using whiteboard.fi as they tell a story. Uh, students can sketch what they are hearing in Spanish or whatever language you're teaching. That helps with comprehension. As a science teacher, I can be talking about a scientific principle, talk about the cell, and then have students sketch and draw uh, what they're hearing or what they're envisioning about this. Chemistry, you got you know equations uh, for math, graphs and charts, world history, you got timelines, geography practice, just so many great ways to do quick sketches, quick drawing. This is why I call it learning Pictionary. This is a really fun tool and it's completely free. Now there's lots of uh, whiteboarding apps out there. Whiteboard.fi isn't the only one. You can check the links in the description. I've linked to several different tools. You can kind of compare them all and figure out which one you like the best. Idea number four is escape the breakout room. Now I was a big fan of escape room type activities. I've got all my locks here that I used to use in the classroom. My own kids love these activities, solving puzzles and opening up those locks. Unfortunately, we can't do physical locks in a virtual environment, but you can 
do a virtual escape room. Now this activity does require access to breakout rooms. You can do it in Zoom or Google Meet, but it is a premium feature. So your district would need to upgrade to the enterprise edition of G Suite in order to access the breakout rooms. First thing that you need is a escape room activity, and there's several ways that you can get them. Uh, Breakout EDU is a company that provides a huge library of ready-to-go escape room activities. This is one called Winter Sports. That's really good for elementary and middle school. The nice thing about these is that they're ready to go. It's completely self-contained. Students just need one link and everything they need is right there. Breakout EDU has a few free games. This is one of them. And then there are many other games that you can access if you have a Breakout EDU subscription. If you're not interested in purchasing a subscription, you can build your own uh, escape room activity using Google Forms. All you need is a series of clues that um, will give students you know, a letter code, a number code that will allow them to enter uh, into the form and proceed through it. This is a brilliant example created by a public library. This is a Hogwarts Harry Potter themed escape room. Really tricky um, and it's quite involved. Uh, this would take quite a while to complete. Um, my friend Stephanie Howell also created a uh, clue game. Now this one is unique to her school. The teachers in her school actually appear in the activity, but you can kind of see how she set this up um, and potentially build your own. Either do a Google search for, you know, Google form escape rooms, or you can build your own and create exactly what you need. Now to actually use these, you're simply going to get the link to the escape activity. You're gonna to go to Google Meet, you're gonna set up your breakout rooms. You know, you put anywhere from three to five students into a room. Now, there's two new features of Google Meet that are very helpful for these escape room activities. You now have the ability to set a timer for the room. Escape room activities always work better when there's a definitive end time. So you have 10 minutes, 12 minutes to finish, to escape out of the room. You're kind of racing the clock. So we're gonna go ahead and set a timer for um, this activity. We'll set it for 10 minutes. The second thing that is cool, and you may not know that this is available unless you actually go into a breakout room. So I'm gonna go in as a student. There is a new request help button. So when a student goes into the breakout room, at the top of the screen, it will show them what room they're in, and there's this ask for help button. So if your students get stuck, if they need a hint to help them move through the escape room experience, they can say ask for help, and that will indicate to the teacher that someone has requested help. So I can see right there, Susan has requested help, tells me which room to go into, I can pop in, give them a clue, and allow them to continue through the activity. Escape rooms are a fun way to challenge students' critical thinking and problem-solving skills and increase the social engagement aspect of your virtual lessons. Idea number five is learning stations. Now I'm a big fan of learning stations. I did them all the time in my high school biology classroom. It's a great way to you know, break up a 50 minute class period and you know, five, 10 minute uh, stations with different activities in each. You can now do learning stations virtually. There are two things that you will need. Number one, you will need access to breakout rooms. That's either through Zoom or the enterprise version of Google Meet. Secondly, you will need a Google slide presentation that divides the groups and the activities. Now I've put a template together for you. This one works very well. There is a link to this template in the description if you wanna make a copy for your own classroom. So the first slide gives the group assignments and then on the subsequent slides, I'll provide each group a link or directions for their particular activity. So perhaps they're going to um, have a discussion question. We can do a Venn diagram comparing characters in the novel that we're reading, do a little research on a scientific um, property. We can do some descriptive writing. This is a good elementary uh, example, dress your snowman and describe it using descriptive language. Um, we can read an article and identify the key points from that article. 
you have an unlimited potential for different activities. Now, every group can do their own independent activity. You can rotate the students through uh, these activities during a class period. It's really up to you. So grab the link from the description and start learning with your students in stations. Now, I know I said we were doing five tips, but I have a bonus one for you. Stick around for bonus tip number six. Bonus tip number six. Now, I don't know if your students will actually find this idea fun or interesting, but it will definitely help you as a teacher design better lessons. The enterprise version of Google Meet has a feature called Q&A, and I have figured out a way that you can hack the Q&A feature for exit tickets. It's very easy to do, and it will provide you with very helpful, actionable feedback that you can use to improve your next virtual session. All right, let's take a look at how you can set this up. I have a Google Meet session in progress right now. I'm gonna go to the activity tab over in the top right corner and click on Q&A. So let's go ahead and turn on the Q&A. But rather than inviting my students to submit questions, I am going to ask them to share the one thing that they learned from this lesson one important takeaway, one thing they would like to learn more about, one thing that they're not quite comfortable with that they would like to review during the next session. Come up with a question that will give you information to help you design and prepare for your next uh, virtual lesson. Now, students will be invited to submit a question. Uh, the verbiage looks a little weird, but the cool thing about this is that after you end your Google Meet session, you will receive a spreadsheet with all of the submitted responses. It'll look something like this. These are the exit tickets from a uh, PD session I led back in November. And I can quickly scan through here to see what, the, what thing resonated with the students, what question they'd like to learn more about, um, their favorite aspect of the meeting. This information will help you design better lessons for your students. If you've enjoyed these five Google Meet tips and tricks, stick around. I'd like to share some of my other favorite lesson ideas with you coming up next.